Right, 47 days to crucial U.S. presidential poll and Olden Polonese and Lionel M. Johnson uh, with us on countdown to the White House in California. And Joel and I are taking them through uh, the countdown. Um, let's look at this, um, Olden. You, you were in the NBA for several years. And when you think about what sportsmen are doing to the many of them in the protest, I, I remember the iconic figure of Tommy Smith at 68 Olympics in Mexico, the Black Power salute to draw attention to what was going on in the United States with African Americans. Um, nowadays, we have Colin Kaepernick, a knee to the ground uh, during the US anthem. Um, you have um, had a number of other you know, prominent people. There's also um, Naomi Osaka. She just won the US Open, and she had on every, uh, every, every match she played at the US Open, she had a name of one uh, victim of um, you know, law enforcement um, linked killings. And um, you have um, LeBron, J LeBron James every now and then, um, you know, going against the White House and what he thinks is racial injustice. We could go on and on with what sportsmen are doing. Help us understand how sportsmen in, uh, and women in the United States are helping to heal a fractious society. Well, again, the athlete has always been at the forefront of protests and bringing awareness to what's been going on. I mean, you mentioned Tommy Smith and John Carlos, and I still remember the iconic picture of Muhammad Ali, Bill Russell, um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, so many other great athletes that came together to support Muhammad Ali because he did not feel that it was right for him to go to war and fight you know, for this country and based on his religious beliefs. And so to me, athletes have always been there. You know, Bill Russell fighting um, racism, you know, because he couldn't even stay in the same hotel with his Boston Celtic teammates. And so, yes, we've always been at the forefront. And again, I say it's unfortunate that it has to always be an athlete. We're not the leaders. We're not leaders of our countries. That's their responsibility. That's their job. But unfortunately, these people are set up in a position where, you know, they're there 30, 40, 50 years, and it's the same crap, you know, while they're in office, you know, and I'm speaking about our Congress and our Senate. You know, we talk about the presidential race, but no one ever mentions the Senate and Congress. And to me, that's where the changes need to happen. You know, eight years ago, we appointed um, Barack Obama as president. We still have police killings. We still have stuff going on. Even though we had a black president, we still had crap going on. The nation was divided, still. And so to me, then we get Trump, the nation's still divided. The only thing is a lot of those people feel comfortable expressing their hate. That's the only difference between he and Obama or Clinton or Bush or Bush or Carter and so on and so on. Reagan, I can go on and on. It's always been device, divisiveness in this country. And so to me, the athlete and sports in general has been the, the balancer, so to speak, where you, know, you can always watch sports and see black and white people in brotherhood. And so to me, that's the great equalizer, sports. And as athletes, people do look for us. It's, you know, because athletes get paid these exorbitant amounts of money and people will do pretty much what they ask them to do. If I ask you to buy Gatorade, you will buy Gatorade. If I ask you to buy Nike shoes, you will buy Nike shoes. That's just how we're programmed. And so to me, the athlete has always been a powerful source. But again, I go back and say, our government officials have to do better. Mm. Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lorna. Yes, if I may add to mm. even going further with what Walden is, is saying, you know, it's not just a presidential race, but you want to know your state that you live in. You want to know who your senator, your state senators are. You want to know who your assemblyman are, or woman, assembly person is, your mayor, your governor, because, and you want to make sure that you vote and get involved in those areas, because that's what affects you directly. If you have the right governor, he can always you know, the president cannot just walk into your state and do something because the governor has a pen and he can sign it. He can veto whatever the president may want to do. They just cannot come into your state. So know, understand 
your electorate, understand where, who you are, where you are, and what you need to do to get things done. Um, and also in terms of the, the athletes being there uh, at the forefront, yes, um, you know, my mother always taught me in Jamaica, to whom much is given, much is expected. And politicians are politicians, but we put them in office. So it is it's our responsibility to demand what we want from them. And whether it takes um, a ball player or a musician, because um, like the ball player, you know, they like, everyone likes celebrity. So celebrity sells, politician sells. So if you can utilize those resources to amplify your message, I think it is all good. And I would say, I would beg to differ a little bit by saying, don't rely on the president. Rely on your local leaders and demand what you want from them. Because mm -hmm. our system is set up that way for us to be able to gain those things that we need from our, from our local leaders. Mm -hmm. Joe. Yes, yeah, yes. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, so, but now using your, your, your professional background, not the sport one, but the health one, We've obviously have done in the community. Uh, so, what would you um, tell our constituent, uh, tell our, our, our audience regarding uh, the vaccine? Uh, there were some rumors that you know, some people that yes, um, black universities as volunteering to 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 be tested with the new corona vaccine. Uh, do you believe in the science? Do you believe what Pachi is saying? Do you really think that uh, do you think that is a possibility that we can have something in the market? Um, before the election or right or early after the election? Let's be realistic. Well, um, I, I listen to the scientists. And, and, and from what the scientists are saying, we're not going to have anything until maybe later next year, 2021. Um, whatever they come up with now will be, maybe they'll come up with a vaccine, but it has to be tested. For it to be a proven um, vaccine, vaccine, it has to be tested. So they have to give it to a certain amount of people over a period of time, and it has to be tested. So I'm listening to the to the scientists and the healthcare expert in that particular field. And the thing with black people, I you know, it's going to be a challenge with the current leaders that we have in the White House. It is not helping our skepticism because we have experienced what has happened with vaccination in the past, where we were given vaccination and then left to die. And so black people are very skeptical. So they're gonna take people that looks like them or looks like us to be able to communicate what is necessary for black people to get involved in the testing, in the, in the experiment, as well as later on, if there's a vaccination that comes out, um, whether or not they, they wanna take it. You know? So I think it is important that we understand that it's gonna be harder based on experience, but I think it is necessary I don't think it's going to be soon. It doesn't need to be speeded up. Um, one of the experts said recently, wear your mask. He believed, he, he said he would go as far as. Wearing a mask may be more protection right now, is right now more protection, but maybe a better protection in the long run than vaccination. So we have all these things coming. So understand your source, where you're getting your, your information from, and, and make a decision, make a an informed decision, not unlike our president who doesn't believe that we are capable of making decisions for ourselves. So he knows that the vaccine, that the, the virus is five times deadlier, as he said to Woodward, mm -hmm. five times deadlier than the flu. Right. But yet he comes on TV and saying, oh, it's going to be cured overnight. It's going to be a miracle. It's going to take it away. God is going to cure it in, 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 a, in, a, in a second. And people are dying. People are dying. I feel he's liable. He's responsible. For, our, for the nation to have a coordinated effort to make sure that we are safe. And he is neglecting, he is not checking that box right now for me. He's not checking that box. And I'm hoping that people will see and make a decision, get out and vote, vote your conscience, vote your, your belief or vote what is effective or what is good for you. Mm -hmm. And make sure that we have the right person in the right White House that is gonna, that cares about our lives care about American lives, care about lives in general, and will do the right thing to to keep us healthy. I'm, I'm sure that um, Alden wants to get away from the politics and the issues, so we can talk about them separately. But <laughs> it is what it is. We have an election uh, in just weeks from now. Um, um, 
you know, Lorna talks about the pandemics um, that have hit the United States and globally too, the coronavirus pandemic and the economic pandemic. Interestingly, both pandemics are what of great concern to African Americans uh, in the United States as we approach the poll. Well, what are your thoughts about how Af African Americans have been affected uh, by the coronavirus pandemic and the attendant uh, economic crisis they face because of the lockdowns uh, that have happened? Do you have had anything convincing from either Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Alden. Uh, personally, I mean, neither one, because this thing is beyond what I think we know it is. Um, the coronavirus came about and mm -hmm. you know, we don't know anything about it. And yet, you know, our, our leaders had us in the dark. And to me, that's number one. You know, you can't have your people in the dark, whether you think we will be able to accept it and understand it or not. You have to tell us the truth. OK, you have to tell people the truth. And I'm not for anybody that's getting paid. People with agendas, I don't deal with. I try not to deal with. You know, if somebody's getting billions of dollars to somebody else to tell me that there's something going on, I'm not really going to believe it because you have an agenda. I want to hear from the people that don't have agendas. And so, again, all this is political. You know, isn't it amazing that in a pandemic, we raise prices on stuff. We we have a mask, you know, we have the deadliest virus and yet a mask can stop it. A t-shirt over your face can stop it. A bandana can stop it. So to me, and th this is my opinion, okay, the coronavirus has been politicized because if you really cared about the people globally, you would just care about the people globally you wouldn't make it a political thing because wear the mask, not wear the mask. So which side are you? Are you Democrat, Republican? There's always gonna be, there's always this divisiveness. Even in a pandemic, we're divided. Is it deadly? Yes or no, is all I need to know. And if it is, I will sit my butt in the house, I will wear the mask, And if, but if it's not, let me know also, so I don't have to wear the mask. But we don't even know that. We're still confused. You know, the mask works. The mask doesn't work. It's a major thing. It's not. It's respiratory. It's blood. It's airborne. It's not airborne. It's too much confusion. It's too much. You know, so I've been doing, I've done my own research. I've talked to medical people that don't have agendas. And so I have a better grasp of it than a lot of people. Again, I'm not going to tell people what to do with their lives. I wear a mask out of respect for other people. That's my only reason. Personally, I don't care about the coronavirus. I don't believe in it. But out of respect for other people, I will wear the mask mm. because they're afraid. I'm not. Mm. And so to me, it doesn't really matter. But again, we can't keep making everything politics. You know, a pandemic should be just that. They charged us for the mask. They didn't even give the mask away free. They charged us for it. So where did all that money go? If three dollars, if eight billion people get a mask for three dollars, that's twenty-four billion dollars. Where did that twenty-four billion dollars go? You know, has anybody asked why Amazon, Jeff Bezos, all of a sudden is damn near a trillionaire? But then, oh, but doing Olden, the pandemic, more money than anybody else. Right, but Olden, if, if, how is that? Right, Olden. But if, if the question was posed at you, and you asked the question, I mean, uh, America has got. Uh, uh, over 150,000 deaths, getting closer to 200,000 deaths. Uh, it's got the highest toll of coronavirus um, infections across the world. And the question yeah, was put to you, um, Donald Trump, in the last couple of months, how has he managed uh, the virus at the Hems, uh, at the White House? W won't, you, won't you look at the evidence and say if he's done a good job or not in deciding how you're going to vote on the 3rd of November? Well, listen, no one's doing a good job. People are still dying. OK, so Biden don't know what's going on. Trump doesn't know what's going on. The doctors don't know what's going on because they keep bouncing all over the place. OK, whether it's mask or no mask. So I can't vote for somebody that don't know what's going on. I need to know the fact. I need to know the truth. And still, the Americans have not been told the truth. 
Uh, you know, it, it, that's really interesting because if if the leader in the in the White House who's responsible for the people, they're saying behind closed door that this is real, it's five times deadlier than the flu, and then it comes out and said, no, it doesn't need masks. I don't see how him giving Jeff Basil or any of those guys um, the authority to, to make more money based on the gloves, that doesn't go together. It, because he's saying, no, you don't need the mask. But yet somebody's making money off masks. So that doesn't go together with the government that's in office at the current time. And Biden is not responsible for the United States of America right now. Biden is a citizen just like you and I. So not making it political. I think we people are dying. That's not political. You have over 200 million people. And that is just an estimate because you don't really know over another 150 million people have died of unknown, not related to COVID, they say, but one, more than 150,000 more than what would have happened to the in the same time period. So, you know, it is, it is confusing to some people. And yes, because we don't know the virus, we are learning as we go along. I think we should do take take advantage of what we know, and what we know, based and 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 um, based on data, is that the mask work. So if it does work, why not do it? It's not going to kill you. We're wearing seat belts. We're you, what what about your rights? You know, you're wearing seat belts to protect yourself because studies show that if you are in a car accident and you have your seat belt on, you have a better chance of survival or or mortality and morbidity is, is, is better. So if we believe, even if we're wrong, if we believe that today the mask is working and it's cutting down on the virus, why not wear it? It's not gonna hurt you. It's gonna make it better. Later on, we find out it doesn't work, we take it off. But it doesn't hurt to do it right now. That's what we know. And everybody is studying and as we go further, we, get, we understand more but we don't understand everything about, about the virus. But one thing we do know, there is a virus that's killing people because we have the data. Mm -hmm. Angel. Okay. Uh, let me send, change topic because you may not agree on this one. So, <laughs> <laughs> because all of them say he doesn't believe in it. I was like, okay, I, 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 let's, let's stop it there. So let's not debate on the, if the corona exists or not, if it's a conspiracy or not. Let let leave it alone, and maybe get you back for this for another discussion on that particular topic. Let's come to immigration. So we all immigrants. We all uh, informing uh, uh, the voters about uh, what is good for them, and we're not voting for uh, Trump or Biden because of the hair or who they represent, but because of policy, I guess. So. Between you and I, uh, which of those two candidates has a policy that really responds to your need when it comes to immigration, your family reunion, and the American dream? Because you both fulfill the American dream because you were able to come here, you were able to, uh, to emerge in the American society because immigration policy was conducive for that. So which of those two candidates have a good immigration policy? I'll start with you, Alden. Well, we know where Trump stands on immigration, and so to me, but, you know, even though if I don't like somebody, I still try to find the truth within it, you know, I don't like Trump, you know, I just don't like some of the things he does and says, and I don't like how he treats people, you know, but his thing on immigration is you have to come to this country legally, you know, it's not about, well, we're not accepting immigrants. You just have to do it legally. And so it's the same thing I'm, I'm assuming for um, Biden as it's been for all the other presidents. It's, there's a legal process to come into the United States or to come into any country. And so to me, that's where we have to you know, see the immigration policy, okay? Because I don't think anybody's saying that no one can come to the US. You just have to do it legally. And that's why I said we came here legally. You know, we went through the proper channels and came in. We didn't sneak into the country. And so that's where I stand on it. So I think they both have the same policy, so to speak. I just think that Trump is doing some stuff that, you know, doesn't correlate with me too well. Whereas I think Biden will, you know, I think his policy is going to be better. And I, for that, for the reason of, you know, some of the things Biden has done in the past, I think he's going to be a better president 
than he was as a senator and as a vice president because I think he has a lot of making up to do, and I think he's going to take the steps needed to to show African American community that you know he he's changed a little bit from when he was making those other policies, you know, like you know certain policies that were against black people, and so. In that aspect, you know, I think I would side with him. But again, the immigration policy is all about legally coming into the country. And, you know, that's where I want to focus, not so much because if you're illegal, you're illegal. You shouldn't be here anyway illegally. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, um, the, he, Trump um, definitely changed a lot of the policies and on and, and, and immigration. He has a draconian style of immigration policy that doesn't fit with me. If I, if it was, if it was today, me, I'm trying to get to America. I would not have made it. The country of the United States was built on immigrants. We're all immigrants in this country, except for the American Indians. So with Trump believing that it's okay to block people of color, the country that are people of color from coming into this country, and allow other the whites to come in, people that look like him to come in, I think that is definitely a bias. And that's not a policy that, that America ascribed to. Um, because like I said, with open arms, America welcome immigrants. It is immigrants like me that build this country. And all the, you know, the great, a lot of the great technology and all of that, it, they're immigrants that did that because we're all immigrants. And so I believe that with Joe Biden, that he will reverse a lot of the po draconian policies that, that Trump has put in place. Yes, I believe, and I think most Americans believe, that we have to have an immigration policy, but we have to have one that works and makes sense for the economy of the country and otherwise. So I believe that Biden will do that. I think he will make changes with that, make it more reasonable. Refugees. You cannot, you know, people are running away from country as refugees because they are suffering in their countries. And we had a policy for that. And now look at what's happening at the border. You're talking about even the vaccination. They're cutting out women's uterus because of their people of color. And we're just finding out about that. So the policy of the leader of the country at this time is draconian. It is cruel. It is unusual punishment. And um, the immigration status need to be revamped. And I believe that with the new um, people, new uh, administration coming in, we will see a change and we will have reasonable policy that people will have to come into this country legally, but it will be reasonable policy that works for, for the countries as well as for our country. Mm. Right. How, how time flies when we're having... Uh, a big discussion. We wonder where all the time has gone to as we bring the uh, discussion to a close and count down to the White House. But we've got some questions for you. Um, huge fans, where are the NBA and of American track and field? Lona, I'm still with you on this one. You raced uh, with, um, let's say, the greatest ever in track and field, uh, Florence Joyner Griffith, uh, Flo Jo. Uh, I, I remember Joe's going through the records to imagine that Bob Beamon's record for long jump then had gone for about 20 uh, 322 years before it was broken in Japan, Tokyo. That's for the long jump, but it doesn't look like any of Flo Joe's records in the 100 or 200 meters will ever be broken. That's for you, Lorna. Wow. I said, you know, I remember that day very clearly, 1988, in July. I was sitting in the bleachers in Jamaica um, waiting to do my, to, to, for the 100 meter trials. And we heard on the radio, 1049 and we said okay we know it's wind dated you know it's it's, it's not gonna count this is really crazy <laughs> and then it, they said no it was not wind dated it was real so you know it was a valid race so that was incredible i think it's gonna take years and years i think other records like the 200 and others they, they, they somebody will come along at some point and do that but i don't know if it's possible <laughs> for a woman to run faster than 1049 so uh, I think that's going to be a challenge. It's going to be on the record book for years. And like I said, I, were, I trained with her. Uh, we used to you know, train together. And my fastest time, um, actually, in the 200 meter was with Flo Jo. So she, she pushes you to that limit. So I'm glad to have run with her. But no, I don't think 
anybody's going to break that 1049 anytime soon. However, being Jamaican, and I'm Jamaican, and you know what the Jamaicans are, maybe they start eating some more yams. You know what I'm talking about, Nigeria. <laughs> eating some more of that yam. You never know. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Even though yam and pepper, you be flying. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've got a question for Olden. This one is the NBA. So we take Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan. Olden, who is it going to be? Well, they all were great. So if I'm building a team and you give me one of them, it's not like I'm going to say, no, I don't want them. So it's like 1A, 1A, and 1A. You know, <laughs> Bird and Magic uh, will always be tied together, um, how they brought the NBA back to life and how they made it popular. And Jordan took it global. I think Jordan's biggest thing was the fact that he was a global icon. And so to me, you know, it's, again, 1A, 1A, and 1A. They were all great. Larry Bird was a great white hope. And he gave white people, you know, someone that they can say, oh, my God, he's just as good as black guy. And Magic, you know, had the big smile and did anything he wanted with a basketball at 6'8". And Jordan came along with the tongue wagging and just took us to the, another stratosphere. And I think we've all benefited from those three gentlemen. And all right. Even <laughs> so, you just got to, like, let legends be legends, you know. Just because I say... Michael Jordan was great doesn't mean Magic wasn't, or, or Larry Bird, and vice versa. Just like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was great. It doesn't take away from Bill Russell, you know? Right. And that's something we have to understand as a people. Stop bringing our people down, you know, to make another one look good. R raise all of them up, you know? They all are great, because they all are doing something that we all, you know, a lot of people wish they could do. You know, so let's just keep raising our people up instead of bringing them down, you know, by comparing them to others. I just believe that all three were great, legendary players. All right. Th thank you very much, Olden Polonese. We have an A team here. Angel I, uh, Olden Polonese, and Lono M. Johnson. Thank you very much. Count down to the White House. Thank you very much for being thank here. You. Thank you very much, Olden, for being straightforward. And thank, thank you. you so much, uh, Lorna, for being so resourceful. Looking forward to host for you hosting you again. Love to. Thank you so much. All right, voila. And from the A team, and that's it on Countdown to the White House this week. I would like to thank our guest, Lorna M. Johnson, founder of Global Institute and an accomplished global business, as well as Olden Polonis, former professional basketball player, the NBA. You can also subscribe and watch previous episodes of Countdown to the White House on our YouTube channel. And tweet and follow us on Twitter at Silverbed News 24 I'm Agogo Obo. Bye-bye.